Hey, what's up guys? I want to do a short video today talking about the origins of music and I'm going to leave you with an important question at the end of it and I want you to follow the entire video and then answer the question in the comments so that we can actually continue the conversation. Okay, first off, music is only recently been able to be not only preserved but shared with the entire world. We not only have access to music everywhere in, this, in the forms of CDs, um, making a comeback our uh, cassettes and records, um, but more than likely we listen to music on the internet nowadays, uh, which is accessible most parts of the entire world. Um, but when we think about how easy it is to actually have access to music, uh, you must also think about how easy it is to preserve music. Not only do we have a written notation in our Western uh, culture of music, um, obviously with other cultures you have different forms of notation, uh, but we use Western uh, notation. We also have an ability to record music fairly easily. Everyone has access to a computer. Most people have access to a computer. Um, and then also, if you have $40, you can go on Amazon, get you a cheap microphone that plugs in via USB, get you some free recording software, and you can be on your way and recording your music and then shipping it out for other people to listen to. Um, hopefully one day we, we will be looked as an ancient civilization and uh, people thousands of years, hopefully, if the human race survives that long, um, people thousands of years from now can actually look back and see all this music that we made, although I do feel sorry for them because there's a lot of it and a lot of it's not very good, <laughs> in my personal opinion. No culture to date has a lacking of music. And within each culture, you have subcultures of music. There's so much music, but one thing we can say for certain is that music plays an integral role in the human psyche. With that understanding though, we also have to address that there is no agreement on the exact origins of music. We have our first composer, which is actually a priestess, that's right, a woman composer from ancient Mesopotamia. Um, I'll leave her name in the description, it's hard to say, and you can look her up as well. Uh, but she actually wrote uh, on stone tablets lyrics to the moon god and goddesses of ancient Mesopotamia. But as far as the exact beginning, when was music created? I personally am of the camp in which as early as man had language, some form of communication with each other, you then had music. Whether it was yelling in harmony with each other to uh, have voices carry over vast distance, to me that could be music, or it was uh, chants for hunts, things like that. Um, when uh, when other animals, I mean, I don't personally feel like animals have music, but think about when animals hunt together like wolves or packs of, um, of uh, various species of apes. Um, I mean, they're making these sounds and they're doing it together in a way which seems to motivate them in some way. Maybe that is a music, uh, or at least the precursor of what music started with. You could say that that's where music came from, but that's a whole other topic. One thing that we can say, though, is most people would find things like rustling trees and water and rain and thunder as being soothing to an extent. Um, but with these things, inherently, they are sound and they are soothing. But that is also not correct to say that that's music. But if you record it and you ship it out to Spotify and people listen to it on a playlist, is it music then? Maybe music's actually what we perceive, not its genesis or its origins. Interesting, right? Science can actually divide music within pitch, timbre, frequency. I even have a tattoo of me singing May Angels Lead You In. Um, it's for my, my aunt, he actually passed away. Um, but you can see this is a recorded sound uh, with loudness, which varies. And we have ways of doing that on a computer where we can actually visualize the sound and then go in depth with that sound. You can actually categorically organize music with something called music theory. I'm sure most musicians have heard of music theory. Maybe not all musicians have studied enough music theory to understand, but I would make the argument that music theory is like seeing the matrix. You can see the similarities in song structure also, the similarities in chord structure that make up things that uh, hit the top 40 pop charts and whatnot. 
um, there's like a, a formula that we tend to evolve over generations that our artists not copy each other, not not necessarily copy each other, but we, we find is the most entertaining of that era and we tend to copy and paste and we use that same chord structure or that same chord pattern um, to create music that, that most of the populace finds enjoyable. But to say that you could constitute what is music based off of scientific understanding is not true. And you can also say that with math either, or as you could say, this equation poops out a song. But the, the difference between math and music is that math cannot evoke emotion am amongst the masses like music can. Maybe if we came up with an equation for free energy that was easily accessible to everybody, we'd get emotional about it, but probably not as emotional as listening to your favorite love song after you broke up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. We're very simple creatures. Back to what I was saying with the origins of music, after ancient Mesopotamia and uh, ancient bone flutes found even before that, uh, our first large body of work that not only is the precursor to Western uh, Western music and Western harmony, but is also the uh, precursor to many things within the world. I'm of course talking about ancient Greece. And if you look into ancient Greece, you see a wide plethora, not only of instruments, but of the way that music was used at the time to then uh, be the precursor to our uses of today. And we also have the precursor to uh, modern music theory that we have today as well. Biologists, when studying ancient humans, tend to be in the same camp of this mindset, which is humans only spent energy on things that were inherent to their survival. And I'm not talking about like ancient Greece where you have people like drinking wine and philosophizing. I'm talking about like, think cave people. Why would ancient human spend time on things like paintings, music, dance, that have evolved into what we have today? But why would they spend time on it then? Doesn't make much sense unless you think about it in this light, and this is where I'm gonna leave you with a question. I believe, as, as well as other biologists, I'm not a biologist, by the way, <laughs> that humans used art as a medium of focus for what not only drove them, but were of inherent interest uh, in order for them to survive. Um, Things like animals, objects of interest, love and relationships are preserved in painting, are preserved in, uh, in song. Answer down below, do you think that music started out as a way to pass time, as a way to expel excess energy? Or do you also agree that music was created in order to uh, sharpen the mind and focus on things that were important to survival? Or do you think that music was created for something else? Leave down below what your thoughts were, and I'll be making another video, and I'll be seeing you later.